Hello and welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we're going to be making use of this uh, device the Hantec 2D72 which is a handheld uh, oscilloscope but it's also a multimeter and also has a arbitrary wave generator uh, and we've got two channel scope and an output there for the wave generator and so what I'm going to try and do here is, is just see if we really can perform a little experiment on, on a small circuit built on the breadboard uh, and make full use of all the functions on the meter and, and see how we get on with that. So if that sounds interesting uh, hang on in there and we'll have a look. Okay well here we are with the basic circuit of the common emitter amplifier and as you can see common emitter comes from the fact that the emitter on each transistor is on the ground side of the circuit. So input is here through a decoupling capacitor. We've got resistors here and here which provide the base bias voltage for, for transistor 1 here. Um, the output of that is taken from the collector uh, through another one microfarad decoupling capacitor into the base of transistor 2. Again here's the base bias network and finally the output is taken uh, from the collector of transistor 2 there and you can see we've got the decoupling circuits in the emitter side. So there's um, essentially uh, four main test points. We're going to feed a, a signal in here and we're going to be checking first of all the supply voltage and then we're going to be checking the bias voltage for the base of the first transistor here. We're going to be checking the bias voltage of the second transistor at test point 3 here and we're going to be checking obviously the shape of the waveform as it enters, uh, the shape of the waveform after amplification and then finally the shape of the waveform after the second stage of amplification. Um, so that's the plan and the plan is to hopefully demonstrate the Handtecker um, oscilloscope signal generator and uh, multimeter uh, which is sort of a almost a little test lab in a box and hopefully we're going to use all that. So here is the, the actual circuit on a breadboard. Um, transistor 1 is there, transistor 2 there, these are the decoupling caps. Here connected here through this yellow lead and this black lead is the input signal um, coming from the, the signal generator, uh, or from the signal generator port of the uh, Antec 2D72. Uh, and then what I've done for test points uh, 2 and 4 which I'm actually going to put the scope on. I've taken these out on these two wires here so the green wire is an extension of test point 2 there and the white wire is actually test point 4 or if you like the output uh, and I think the, the rest of the circuit is hopefully um, self-explanatory. So let's get set up with the meter and then um, take some measurements. Okay, well here we are with the uh, amplifier on the breadboard now being is now powered up. Um, signal generator is connected uh, to the input side, and here's the Hantec 2D72 in uh, digital multimeter mode. So first thing I'm going to check is the supply rail voltage, um, which I would expect to be around about nine volts. Uh, there we go. Yeah, 9.02 volts. So that's the um, recommended supply voltage for this circuit, and so that's. Uh, uh, what I'm using. Um, so now I'm just going to check the bias voltage for transistor 1 which on my circuit diagram was test point 1 which is there. So you can see bias voltage about 1.6 volts something like that for the base uh, bias and on transistor 2 we should see a similar kind of voltage yeah uh, just just about um, yeah there we go one point well what about, about 1.43 so a similar kind of uh, voltage uh, on the base. Okay so um, next thing we need to do is move over to uh, arbitrary wave generator mode like that and as you can see I've asked the generator to produce a sine wave uh, it's at 1 kilohertz and it's at 0 0.1 volts so 100 millivolts peak to peak and when you press the start and stop button you might see the output um, develops a little green a pair of concentric circles that says it's on and enabled so the uh, 2D72 is now producing um, that sine wave uh, 
it's coming out of the generator being fed into the input of the amplifier so we now go to scope mode and I've got channel 1 of the scope um, hooked up to the input so we should be able to see that wave and as you can see um, nice sine wave in the yellow trace uh, currently got nothing connected to to channel 2 which is the green trace so we've got a sine wave there and thing to note is there 50 millivolts per division um, so that's reasonably sensitive setting so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take channel 2 and I'm going to connect it to the output of the first emitter uh, common emitter uh, amplifier stage here like that and straight away you can see got rather an oddly shaped waveform um, and a couple of things to notice about that. Firstly, remember I said here this was 50 millivolts per division and channel 2 is set to 10 volts. So as you can see there's a lot of gain there. Uh, if I were to change those to the same shape you probably wouldn't be able to even see, well, you wouldn't be able to even see the green trace. So there's a lot of gain which probably explains the oddly shaped wave which would manifest itself as distortion. However, for the purposes of demonstration, this distortion doesn't matter too much. We're just here to see um, how the signal looks. And the other thing you can see fairly clearly is that the second trace, the green trace, is 180 degrees out of phase with the first. And so next thing to say about common emitter amplifiers is that they uh, produce an output which is 180 degrees out of phase with the input. OK, let's now move on to the output of the second transistor here. And as you can see, um, playing havoc a little bit with the triggering now. So I'm just going to pop into the triggering menu, and I'm going to tell it to use um, channel two as the as the trigger, which straight away has um, has calmed things down. So we go back into the the channel menu. Uh, we'll pop onto channel two, and I'm just going to uh, reduce the um, size of the display there. So now I'm on to twenty volts per division. So two things to notice, we've pretty much converted our sine wave into a square wave so yeah absolutely definitely um, a lot of distortion going on but also masses of gain. We're on to 20 volts per division for channel 2 um, whereas we're on 50 millivolts at the input. Uh, and the next thing to notice which is probably fairly obvious to you is that channel the input signal and the output signal are now back in phase because that second stage has moved the signal another 180 degrees and so the net effect of that is uh, the signals are back in phase. OK, I hope that's made some sense and you've been able to see the display reasonably well. I wanted you to be able to see the um, the actual circuit as well as the display so that's why it's a little on the small side. But we've got um, We've used digital multimeter, we've used got the signal generator working and we've got the scope working on two channels. And as you can see, the instrument's more than capable of performing a number of measurements on that and also generating us a signal to use. So I think that's pretty impressive for a little handheld scope and multimeter. OK, well, I hope uh, that little session looking at a uh, em uh, common emitter amplifier and using the Hantec 2D72 to um, explore the characteristics of the circuit has, has made some sense uh, and I think actually it, it's demonstrated rather nicely that yes it will generate a signal um, you can use both channels of the scope as well as the multimeter and so if you're interested in an instrument that's and you're on a budget you can actually pack quite a lot into that box um, so I think um, that's quite pleasing to use and Obviously the reduced number of keys means that you have to work your way through the menu system but one thing this making this video has taught me is that a little bit of practice you get um, surprisingly good at it which of course is a common thing with, with modern technology. So I hope that's made some sense. If you've enjoyed the video please click the thumbs up. If not you can click the thumbs down. Either way thanks very much for watching. It'd be great if you could subscribe that would help me and uh, there's lots more electronics videos to come. Got lots of things in the pipeline so hang on in there for that and thanks very much for watching.